I think that I've always loved Christmas. The Sainsbury's advert reminds me of my childhood Christmases. You'll see them hanging out white silk stockings. These are identical to the ones that my brother and I had that belonged to my nan. Christmas morning they had an orange and an apple, some sweets and maybe a small toy. Christmas afternoon Father Christmas came. I don't know how long it took me to get the connection but my dad always seemed to be missing. He had popped next door or gone to get something. That was when we had our main present, nothing extravagant, an umbrella one year, and at the other time a little wicker basket with some woolen knitting needles in. Now Christmas is very different. For us it was about giving. God gave us his son and so we gave things to others. I can remember writing out and illustrating my nan's favourite carol, or learning to play a hymn on the piano to play for her. Sadly today for children it's often about getting. Even if they buy something for their family, it's from money that a parent has given. The Bible tells us that we are happier giving than receiving. But at Christmas today, so many miss out on that happiness. I love Christmas cards and letters that are in them. I know that they take a long time to write and then you have to post them. But it's so great to keep in touch with friends that you've made over the years and you can look at them all the time. You don't have to wait for social media. I do find it a bit sad when people say they're not sending Christmas cards. They'll be giving to charity instead. Why not have a little less food and drink and give that money to charity rather than not keeping in touch and greeting friends? My most memorable Christmases were in Uganda. Denise and I would drive down to the hotel where we'd have dinner and throw sweets from the car and the kids would appear and gather them up. But my most lasting memories are of three children. They all had HIV and were orphans who came to our day centre. Justina was about 13 and had been admitted to hospital. When we got there to visit, she'd been discharged, so we went to her house. It was smaller than a garage and in the Kampala slums. In the house lived about six or eight people and they cooked in a little pot outside. They had so little but wanted us to share with them. Justina couldn't read or write and didn't even know when her birthday was. We, we, we'd agreed that she could share mine. But sadly she died before we could celebrate. She was very talented and I had taken her some wool thinking she could crochet something to sell to get some money for herself. Oh, she did some beautiful crochet but she insisted that it was a present for me. Molly was a bit younger, about 10, and lived with an uncle. She went home from the centre before Christmas to find that they'd all gone to the village and she was left alone. Denise had bought them all some biscuits and I think that's all she had to eat. She came back to the centre between Christmas and New Year and so after checking with the social worker, we invited her to stay with us. She didn't go without food that new year. Molly did have the medication to combat the HIV, but it was all too much for her. So she's now enjoying the celebrations in heaven. I want to end on a happier note. An American TV program came to film at our centre in the days when HIV drugs were expensive. A couple of children have been sponsored through Chemed, but this left many others. In response, we had some people in the US who wanted to sponsor our children, and so Molly and Natasha were put on the regime. As I said, Molly did not manage, but Natasha did. She's now 30. Her viral load is undetectable, and she has two young sons. The oldest one is clear, but the younger one is too young to be tested. When I was in Uganda, Natasha adopted me. Over the years, we've kept in touch, now via WhatsApp and I hope it's not too long before I can go to visit my grandsons. This is what she WhatsApp to me when she heard about her viral load. Forgot to tell you something nice. When I went to see the doctor my last visit, my viral load was undetectable. I was so happy. Felt I should share with you my joy because you have been there for me since day one. When she was really bad, the doctor used to bring her into my office and she would curl up in the corner. Back to Natasha. I appreciate the encouragement and care you gave me. You made me stronger each day. 
Every time I thought of giving up my drugs, I used to read through your letters and find love, even though you seemed far. You gave me the reason to live. God bless you and thank you. Good night. Let's laugh. Whenever we went out, even if she was quite ill, she was all say, always say that, let's laugh. And we did. So this Christmas, thank you, groovy grandma, who paid for those drugs. Thank you, Justina, for showing generosity in the midst of poverty. Thank you, Natasha, for just being you. But most of all, thank you, God, for sending your son into this world for all of us. Help us to show our gratitude, both in our worship and our giving to others.